afternoon, my name is Amy Dixon, and as Bruce mentioned, I'm a product manager in the IBM Smarter Process product management team. And I'm here with John Reynolds. And, and, I'm, and I'm John Reynolds. I'm, I was here last year. It's good to see some of the familiar faces. And, and before I, Amy goes on, I, I need to point out our lovely, our lovely disclaimer statement, which is the same one that you got to read last year, that basically it's saying that Amy and I are not intentionally lying to you. And if we are, IBM's not responsible. <laughs> very good, very nice. Um, at IBM, BPM is part of our Smarter Process portfolio, and Smarter Process covers not just BPM, but also operational decision management. And about six or eight months ago, I took a slight step out of BPM and moved over onto the operational decision management side. So the business rules and events and how they relate to building Smarter Processes and enabling Smarter Processes. And so it's, I was just mentioning to Bruce how interesting being on the ODM side, after being in BPM for a decade, even being on the ODM side, there's so much of what's being said here which is resonating both from how we can complement the capabilities that are being introduced and augment beyond that. So anyway, um, John is gonna talk a little bit about some different patterns and what we're seeing in terms of what our customers are trying to do. And with Smarter Process, it's all about making all of the different process participants, people who are from the process author, the process owner, the process participant, the end customer who is engaged with the process participant, everyone smarter. By enabling that process to be, the three buzzwords we use are instant, seamless, and insightful. So real time and automated. And this is where not just the process orchestration comes in, but also the aspects of ODM related to events and business rules for automating decisions along the line. So that's what ties into the event condition action patterns. Wow, does that sound geeky? It does, doesn't it? It's great. <laughs> And, and I think that when, when you see my slides, you'll realize that uh, there's actually less here than meets the eye. What we're trying to do is we're trying to simplify. So let's take a step back. And why are we all here? We're all here because we're involved with process. And simply put, process is progression towards a goal. So what we think is that we should make it simple for our clients, for our authors, to be able to author any kind of work that progresses towards a goal without having to buy a new tool, without having to learn something completely different. So um, also, because in this conference, you, you, we've got a lot of people talking about a lot of things. I want to make it very, very clear that what we're talking about today is predefined work, work that a business author can't, knows about ahead of time, that is anticipated, that is work that will take you towards a goal, and maybe some work that might take you away from the goal. But once again, it's about simplicity. It's about having, taking our existing tool, which lots of you know and love and lots of you don't love so much, <laughs> and take that tool and make a few tiny little changes to it so that now we can capture pretty much any work that takes you towards a goal. So the first thing, and we've had this for a long time, and everybody's product out there has this, I'm absolutely sure, is the ability for a business author to define an activity sequence, right? This is what BPMN is great at. A is followed by B, B is followed by C. When activity A completes, we do activity B. All right? Everybody knows how to do that. That's work that follows other work. BPM has been solid on this forever. Now, there's another pattern that is supported by BPMN, which is basically event handling. In BPMN, we have the event subprocesses so that when an event happens, you know, we can evaluate some conditions and we can do an action. And that action could, in fact, be kicking off a subprocess. It could be a simple task. But you can do both of these things with almost everybody's BPMN compliant tool, right? You can have the activity sequences and you can have the event handling sequences. There's another pattern which is supported and has been there for a long time. And it's changed a little bit over time, the way we represent it within our particular tool. But this is ad hoc work. This is the ability for us to define an activity that 
when it happens in a process isn't clearly defined, but it can happen in a process. Now, in our own tool, and I know a lot of you have had this a lot longer than, than we have, and I admit that, we're, we're copying you, yeah. But um, in our tool that exists today, you can define ad hoc activities, but simple things you can't define, like this activity is ad hoc, but it's required for the process to complete. So back to what we're wanting to do is we want to blend all this stuff together because work is just work. And the business author should be able to use our tool to basically define any of this work. Activity flow, event handling, ad hoc, one tool. Now, coming back, BPMN, flow ordered progression. We do this, it, you know, I've got this very simple thing here. First activity finishes. That's actually an event. An event happens. That activity completes. And when that event happens, well, the BPMN diagram tells us what to do next. We evaluate the conditions and do what's next. If we look at event condition action, in BPMN, it's pretty simple. You have these disconnected activities that you see on the screen up there. And those disconnected activities, when an event happens, whatever is defined within that activity is done. And it can be a simple user task or it can be a very complex subprocess, right? Now, Bruce is under some strange idea that BPM and case management aren't two separate things. I, I don't know where he gets that idea, but you know, we were kind of looking at this, and I've been working with the former FileNet guys who are an IBM case manager, and they, they identified something that was just kind of really interesting. And that was that these activities that you see typically in case management, they're really ad hoc activities. So, what we've decided to do is, well, we've taken that and we've put that so that you can put it on your BPMN diagram. It looks very much like an event subprocess. It's a disconnected activity. But what's make it special is that we can add preconditions. So to those talks we heard this morning talking about preconditions, right, we can define very simply preconditions on these activities. Now, I, I, I doubt anybody can see what's going on at the bottom of this slide, but we've defined preconditions on this activity. Here it is a little bit, a little bit better, but right there in the BPM and modeler, if you have an activity and you don't connect it to anything, if it's not wired, you have the option of having that executed anyway, and you can define these preconditions. So here is my capabilities that I hear here. I can define the behavior of this activity. I can say it is automatically started by the system, right? Sounds an awful lot like an event, right? It's automatically started, or it could be manually started. The knowledge worker comes in and says, okay, I wanna run this now. We can, with those radio buttons, we can say, is it required or is it optional? And we can also say, is it repeatable? Can I, can I run this activity multiple times? And finally, there's one that kind of, seems kind of strange. It's called hidden. And basically, that's for handling system tasks. With this little simple behavior, I can then go on to say, does it have preconditions? And I can build a logical rule. And my preconditions can be either uh, some data has changed, or it could be a document has been checked into the system. And I think you can see how you could easily hook up any kind of an event in order to kick off the evaluation of these preconditions. Um, that's coming later. What I'm showing you, and once again, what I'm showing you, it's not, it's not GA code, so it's subject to change before it gets out there. But the basic idea, I think you get it, that you take this activity, you don't wire it up, you specify its behaviors, you specify its preconditions, and now you have something that's very powerful. In fact, if you look at this nonsense here, with just those options that we have, I think there's 32 different possible ways of doing an ad hoc activity now, okay? And your automatically launched ad hoc activities are very much like your old event subprocesses were. So we've, we've added in two little dialogues with some questions that your business user can answer. And now we can do all this stuff. Now, I know Scott Francis back there when we were at Lombardi, we would build this stuff and it would take days and it would be flaky and it would, and, and it's silly <laughs> because, you know, these are patterns that our business users want to define all the time. So why not bake them in? And that's what we intend to do. So now I'm going to switch over to a demo. Uh, Gasp, he's actually going to do a demo uh, to show you what, what the user actually sees. 
So what, what does a user see that's different from our existing product? And we have this, for those of you who haven't seen this before, this is our out-of-the-box process portal. And we have the building blocks. Uh, a lot of our clients, they build custom portals, but this is what you get out of the box. And once again, we, we wanted to keep things minimal changes, because especially with our clients, our clients are very, very um, concerned about change, because change means they have to retrain people. And, and you know we're working with people who have thousands of branches, tens of thousands of employees, right? So even a little change can be very expensive. So we thought, OK, how can we take a task-oriented process portal and make it work for this, this, uh, these additional work patterns. Now, these additional work patterns are work patterns that you do on an instance, right? If you have ad hoc work that can be done as part of an instance, you need to be able to deal with the instance. So we just added a tab, which we call processes. Let's hope it comes up. There, it's blinding speed. This is, this is actually connected to a machine up in, in uh, Austin, Texas. And the first thing we have here is we have a nice little list of these are the process instances that I can do work in, right? And I've got a nice little, uh, I've got a nice little uh, search thing here where I can filter that list. But this is basically a list of the processes that I can do work in. And then I also, because these are process instances, just as before, I can actually mark them as instances that I'm following, and I can get to them. But, but I guess my real point is that from here, I can actually get to an out-of-the-box screen that is kind of like a home screen for that particular process instance. All right? And that's all we had to do. So this is, this is an extension of our dashboards, uh, for those of you who, who know our product. And our dashboards are now, this one's instance specific. Now, this one's not really very, very exciting here. But up, up there, you can see that's the data that has been exposed for the instance. And over here, this is a folder. These are the folders of the documents that might be attached to this particular instance. In here, there's the task area. And I'm sorry, this screen is blank. I'll, I'll, I'll run something in a second so it's more interesting. But what's really interesting is over here are these activities, OK? Now, what these are, are these are those ad hoc activities that I defined on my BPMN diagram, right? The, the green arrow there, that little start button there, that is a required activity. That is something that this process cannot complete until that activity is run. The one that's the inverse, it's, it's white with green instead of green with white, that is an optional activity. That's something that I, as a knowledge worker, could go in and say, yeah, I think I need to do that for this instance, right? And then this last thing down here with the little, little uh, um, timer on it, this is actually an activity that has some preconditions that have not been satisfied. And I can actually come in here and I ex can expand, and I'm sorry it's so small. I've got a slide I can show you. But basically here, I can see why this activity can't be started. And, and you know, so this is, this is a very common work pattern you know, this is a lot like what you see in case management. And when, when you're a knowledge worker, y you need to know if there's an activity that needs to be performed in order for this uh, process to complete, but it's being blocked for some reason. Okay. And all of that comes back from that, from that modeler I was showing you, right? All of that comes back from, and I've got a different version of it here. Um, <clears throat> that I think you can probably see a little bit better because it is in the, um, it actually is in a browser, so I can kind of do a control plus. The other thing I wanted to point out here is that we have one model, but we have different people who want to look at that model in different ways. So what I'm showing you here is a very simplified representation. It's got a, a section for required activities and a section for optional activities. And for some people, that's enough, and that's what they want to see when they, when they do something. Other people want to see a complex BPMN diagrams. GASP, other people actually want to see a Gantt chart. But, but here, once again, I can click on these things. And, and once again, I'm sorry it's, it's so small. Let me try to make it a little bigger here so you can see it. OK, so you see these icons here. They're very simple. This is not standard BPMN, but we will be, you know, we'll be talking to the committee about adding things like this. Uh, we have an icon there that indicates, there's a little hash mark. That indicates that it can be done multiple times. 
We also have a little indicator that looks like a little start button. That indicates that it's manually started. Um, there is the ones that are under optional activities, I know it's hard to see, but they are dashed. They have dashed borders. Uh, quite frankly, we made this up. You know, we had looked at using CMMN, and we felt that we didn't need to go that far, right? Uh, so what we did, and there were some things that were kind of incompatible with BPMN. They're, they're supposed to work together, and I know Dennis is working on this, and I'm sure they'll get it right. But um, you know, so we we faked it, and once there is a standard, we'll we'll go back to whatever the standard really is. We we just needed to differentiate between what the things were. Now, when you select one of these, like this one, this one, there's a little dime in there. That means that it has preconditions. And when I slide this up, and I lowered the resolution of this so that I hoped you could see this, well, there's my little precondition um, editor. It's very simple. I can pick between a precondition that is data. I can pre uh, precondition that's a document is filed. Um, um, uh, particular variables have changed, and I, then I can build my logical uh, description over here, and this can be, right now, it's just uh, limited to, to all matching or any matching. Okay, so basically, um, let me go back to my slides. So there, there again, it's very simple, a list of processes, it's a, a page. Now, this is the out-of-the-box page for working with a process instance. This is built out of our coach technology. So um, the, the, for each process type, the, the client can come in and create a custom one of these on top of our framework. And the APIs are there so that you know the REST APIs are there. So if you don't want to use our user interface technology, you can do that. Um, this is a, just a, an exploded view of those activities, the, the three types that we have required, optional, and waiting because preconditions haven't been met. Uh, this is just showing that you can drill down into the activity and see what, what it's waiting on, and that's it. So I don't think we even took our, our whole time there. Good Amy, cost. did you have Good something cost. you wanted to add? No. Uh, well, actually, I say no, and then I say stuff. Um, so as you can see from looking at this, as John was talking about it, it's all about being able for the author to model the process as it needs to be modeled using a single tool and a familiar user experience. Um, from a, an event condition action perspective, you can obviously see how this fits nicely with the ODM side of Smarter Process at IBM from the standpoint of those events can be simple events, something happening in one system or another system. It can be the result of an event that kicked off because of a business rule. It can be the result of a complex event process determining a pattern occurred. So that's how all of that ties in together. OK, and, and we're ready for questions. Anybody have, anybody want to throw some rocks?